Not, Miss Hood. You're winning, sir. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, but but you're not stopping. Are what you? if I am? Oh, but you shouldn't, you know. I've been watching your play for several nights now. It's it's been most interesting. I mean to say, uh, the way you seem to win almost at will, or often enough to make it seem that way. Now, now there seems to be no uh, set pattern in your play, and I wonder... I appreciate your interest, but really, my play is none of your business. Excuse me. Turn in French, please, Charles. Down on your luck, eh? Huh? <laughs> broke? Oh, I wouldn't say broke. I just don't have any money, that's all. It's a fine point. Not even enough to pay your hotel bill? Not even enough to pay my hotel bill. Not too bad. Can you get money anywhere? Oh, I'll have to wire to friends. I hate to do it, but there doesn't seem any choice. It's a shame. Well, don't expect me to go out in the garden and blow the top of my head off. I'm not the type. How are you going to get back to America? Oh, I'll manage. Don't worry. Would you like to go with half a million francs? Half a million francs? Hmm. Who do I have to kill? You haven't answered my question. Well, I'd like very much to go with half a million francs. Who wouldn't? But not if it involves anything illegal and dirty. It's a simple business proposition. Similar to the ones on which your great nation was founded. Let us say, uh, eight hundred thousand. Well, what do you want me to do? Meet me at this address in two hours. No sooner, no later. Understand? Yeah, I understand, all right. I'm not sure I like it. Well, it's not necessary for you to like it, simply uh, to do it. For 800,000 francs. I'll do it. Good. Uh, go back to your hotel, pack your bags, and be ready to leave tonight. Oh, sorry. Do you mind if I sit down? Not at all.
going on here? Something terrible, Dr. Ebert. Well, he was just standing by the door, and then I heard him cry out, and when I ran around the fountain, there he was lying with that knife in his back. I can't imagine what happened. What happened is very simple. He was stabbed in the back. Is he a friend of yours? No, no, I, I knew him by sight. Who are you? Uh, Gerald Winton. I'm a visitor here, a tourist. I saw this man go down the alley. He stepped behind that fountain, and, and then I heard him cry out, and when I ran around the fountain, he was lying. Just like this. He, he had this wallet in his hand, and just as I picked it up, the door opened, and this young lady and the doctor appeared. And then you two. Did you see anyone run away? Well, well there wasn't anyone here. Just the two of us. But what are you doing here? Well, uh, um, Miss Hood, did anyone go in that door? No. Oh, I heard a cry, opened the door, and... There you all were. Dr. Ebert, will you call headquarters? Yes, I will. You had better come with us. But I tell you, I, I don't even know the man. Come, come on, on, what's the matter with you? Come Take on, your on, hands on, on. Monsieur Goron. Mademoiselle Wu? Monsieur Goron, I only wish to know why we are here, Dr. Ebert and I. Oh, Mr. Winton, if it comes to that, it's not as though we were witnesses. Mr. Winton is a witness. I keep telling you I didn't see anything. Then you are a witness to nothing, which, which is a type of witness. But Dr. Airbell and I were inside the house. He was... he was giving me some pills. I understand. Your heart is weak. Oh, say that as though that were a crime. I have, as you say, had a weak heart since childhood. Dr. Herbert was treating me during my stay here. It, it... Oh! Dr. Herbert? The young lady is quite right. Why are we being detained? A man was killed on your doorstep. You recollect? Am I to be held responsible for everything that happens outside my door? Now, this young man has told you a story tonight, which may or may not be true. If it is true, why this man... His name was Davos. Why Davos? If you have given my address, I can't imagine. I have seen Davos once in my life, and that was tonight outside my door, with a knife in his back. <laughs> what a way to begin a friendship. <laughs> Mr. Winton, you tell me, who did the stabbing? I don't know. But there was no one in the alley, I'll swear to that. There was someone in the alley. Who? You. But I didn't kill him. That's ridiculous. Why should I kill anyone? You, you don't really think that Pardon I... Pardon me, I do think. Consider these appearances. You had lost heavily at the tables. You were behind with your bill at the hotel. You claimed that Monsieur Davos asked you to the home of Dr. Hebert. According to Dr. Hebert, Monsieur Davos was unknown to him. You claimed that Monsieur Davos offered you 800,000 francs for some mysterious piece of business which you had volunteered to do and about which you now say you know nothing. Hello. And then, unhappily, Monsieur Davos is stabbed in the back with a knife. And a few seconds later, you are found standing over his body, holding a large sum of money. Hello. Nobody could have run out of the alley because the gendarmes were there. Nobody could have run into Dr. Hebert's house because Dr. Hebert and Mademoiselle Lourdes were just coming out. So you see, I do think. In face of these facts, what does your type of logic force you to conclude, Mr. Winton? I don't know. But I didn't do it. I could never do such a thing. Oh. 
I wish I could believe that. Wait. I have a witness. A witness to the murder? No, to my arrangement with Davos. I don't know his name, but he's sure to be still at the casino. He's there every night. If you take me there, you'll see that I'm telling the truth. So you want to go to the casino? I've got to. I can prove my innocence. Oh, well, I detest moving. But I also detest lies. You may go. Mademoiselle Wood? Mademoiselle will not leave town without first reporting to me. After you, Mr. Winton. Wait here. Well, you see him? Just a minute. There he is. Well. That one with the eye patch. What's the matter? What are you laughing at? <laughs> well, you, you couldn't have picked yourself a better witness. Come, we shall examine him. Oh, oh, Goro, away from your desk. <laughs> the occasion can only be amorous or murderous. The letter, I'm afraid. You know this gentleman? Well, only by sight. I told you he was... I know what you told me, but... Now I shall tell you, this is Colonel March, head of that um, famous section of Scotland Yard, which is known as the Department of Queer Complaint. Oh, you exaggerate our fame, Goro. True. But what difference does it make? Uh, this is uh, Monsieur Winton. He's, um, he's an American. How do you do? Uh, we met before, remember? Have, only you, a few... have you ever seen this young gentleman before? Oh, I'm afraid I haven't. Well, of course you have. At the bar, don't you remember? Only this evening, I, I was sitting there having a drink, and then when I left, I bumped into you, and you went over to talk to Davos. You must remember. Unfortunately, I, I don't. Oh, no, you can't say that. But he already has. Thank you, Colonel. I was wrong. You could not have picked yourself a... A worse witness. He was lying. Please, come along with me. Hmm? No, no, I won't. I won't let you do please, this. Please, please, I detest noise. Let me alone. Let go of me. Let go of me. Let oh, go of me. How I detest noise. Oh, Colonel, I trust I have not spoiled your evening. Not at all, my dear fellow. You merely tried to. Oh, good morning, Goro. Your case must be incredibly difficult to keep you on your feet like this. Why, oh, just like any other case. It's a mixture of clarity and bewilderment. How's our young friend? Safely locked up? Safe enough. I only wish he were in some other jail. He's incapable of speaking below a shout. Uh, oh, 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 my dear oh. fellow, careful. No. <laughs> Business or pleasure? A little of both. I've been dabbling lately in the theory of parapsychology. Huh? Parapsychology. <laughs> Sorry, my English is not up to that word. What is this? It has to do with second sight. Do some people really have it, or is it just, uh, for instance? Now here's a pack of cards. Name each card as you turn it over. For me? Yes. <laughs> uh, king. Tray. Uh, ten. Six. Eight. Jack. Very good average, Goro. Wrong every time. <laughs> but you know there are some people who can name seven out of ten correctly. Well, why do you conduct your card experiment here at the roulette wheel? Thank you very much. Well, my friend here wrote me about a man whom he'd observed. 
First at Nice, then Monte Carlo, and finally here. Mm -hmm. Now, this man invariably won small sums of money at the tables. What's so strange about that? Oh, don't be so impatient, Goron. The point is this, that although he seemed to know what numbers were coming up, he never missed. Yet he, he never increased his bets. He never tried to capitalize on his strange gift. Perhaps he was capitalizing on some other gift. Of course, I knew Davos was a thief, therefore I had to work fast. To apprehend him? Certainly not. Why, the world is filled with thieves. But you can count on the fingers of one hand the people with second sight. Or not to observe him. This man was a great discovery for science. Perhaps he was a great thief. Why did you say... You never saw Mr. Winton before? Surely you believe me. Oh, my dear Colonel, my, my six-year-old nephew would not have believed that performance. Pity. I thought it was rather good myself. Why do you deny seeing him and Davos? To protect Davos, so that I could study him. Well, you didn't protect him enough. He was murdered. No. By whom? By Jerry Winton. Why should I help you when you made me into a liar? I've already told you. I saw you with that thief Davos and I thought you'd be safer in jail. Now you tell me exactly what happened in that alleyway or I'll... I'll leave you to stew on Devil's Island. Well, when I went into the alleyway, the spray of the fountain was between Davis and me. He gave a terrible scream and pitched forward on his head. You're sure there was nobody else in the alleyway? Absolutely. Tell me, Goro. Uh, 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 uh. Tell me, Goro. Are there no exits in the walls of that alleyway? Well, there's only one door. And Mademoiselle Hood and Dr. Hebert were on the other side of it. Unless they were lying. Uh -huh. Then the answer is simple. You mean I did it? But not to be provided by a simpleton. I demand to see the American ambassador. Lock him up, Goro. Lock I him up. I demand to see the American ambassador. I'm going to take your hands oh, off me, you guys. Well, Marge. This is my plan, Goro. Yes, I, uh, I suddenly felt rather ill, and I wondered if... Uh... Come in. Come in. You get through. Thank you. Okay. Take our coat off, please. And your jacket, I think. Thank you. Now, what seems to be the trouble? It was sort of a weakness in the knees, hmm? or fits of dizziness. Only this morning I had a fainting spell. Sit down, please. Your name? <clears throat> March. First name? Uh, <coughs> Percival Clovis Adelbert. Occupation? Study of unusual crime. Put your arm across this chair, will you? <coughs> Had these symptoms long? From time to time. Been under any special strain recently? Nothing unusual. 
Nothing unusual. Huh. Put this on again now. Rick. And this. But, but Doc. You're no I... sicker than I am. I don't know why Garon sent you here or what he's after. But you've no right in this house if I don't want you here. Now get out. Phew, it says. You can tell Garon I've lost my respect for him. He used to do his dirty work himself. As for you, I advise you to take some lessons in your profession. Your technique's abominable. I couldn't agree with you more. Go on up to his tricks. Wasn't that man sick? Sick? That man was a policeman. I suppose you'll be leaving us in a few days. Well, if I'm permitted. <laughs> There'll be no trouble about that. Have I got your address where I can always get in touch with you? Yes, yes, you have. Good. You know, Dr. Kind, you take this trouble. I'm a doctor. Now, here is a medicine that I want you to take, but not until at least three days after you get back. By that time, the other treatment I've given you will have worn off. Well, would it hurt if I take one, just in case of an attack? In case of an attack, take one of the powders I gave you, not, on no account, one of those. Yeah. But you've nothing to worry about. Yours is not a serious condition. Thank you, Doctor. I'm so sorry your short stay has been spoiled by that incident the other night. Yes. Yes, I find it very difficult to believe that Mr. Winton is a murderer. Oh, it's a mix-up. He'll be released. Oh, Goodbye, Mademoiselle. All you have to do is to follow those instructions, and I'm... Pick it up, Doctor. Go on, bend down and pick it up the way Davos did the night you dropped the money in front of him. And followed it with this. Goro. Here. Yeah. Did you see anything of the knife? Not a sight of it. <laughs> of course you didn't. It blends perfectly with the falling water of the fountain. Especially at night. <laughs> Give yourself up, Dr. Hebert. You're a reasonable man. Why cause unnecessary work for everyone? Oh, come now, Doctor. We know that Davos was an incomparable jewel thief. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, you have in your possession right now a pearl necklace that he turned over to you. For you were his fence. But the crisis arrived when you decided not to split with him, but preferred to kill him. And poor Jerry Winton, who was to have been the innocent bearer of the pearls, was left with a preposterous story and a murder charge. Yes, but I was with the doctor that night. Didn't he find some excuse to leave you? Well, yes. Yes, he did go upstairs for a moment. Of course he did. That's all he needed, a moment to throw the knife, as I did. For well, this is a cul-de-sac open only to the sky. Go, Lynx! Ah! And here are the pearls, beautifully sugar-coated to get them through customs. I detest shooting. It makes so much noise. <coughs> you live, Dr. Hebert. If not long, long enough for Madame Guillotine. Mademoiselle Hood, if you go down to the Prefecture, you'll find your noisy Mr. Winton there, still calling for the American ambassador. Please, take him out to dinner at the expense and with the apologies of the French government.
Thank mm-hmm. you.